yes we can start now uh, nikita ma'am uh, principal ma'am has not joined yet uh, she is joining just just a minute huh? Hello, Nikita ma'am. Uh, Principal ma'am has joined. Can you make her co-host? Yes. Good afternoon, Principal ma'am. Hello, sir. Hello. 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 Hello, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, good no, afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to our kids. Wait to the exam choice. Yes, exam. No, no. I thought offline, hal, online, hal, we are going to be able to do it. No, no, no. I am going to retire. Okay, you are going to retire? Yes, it will be a big workshop. In May, May. In the online period, you are going to retire? Pan, लॉकडाउन मधे अरे वाहस न बाकी कस चल सजे ना बर तुम रिटायर एक्टिव आ आता मैडम ने कॉल के बरबर है मैडम ने कॉल के कस नहीं आरकेटी ने कॉल के अपने संबंध एवडे जुने करेक्ट 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 वी कैन स्टार्ट नाउ ओके मैम शल वी स्टार्ट विद द प्रोग्राम आई थिंक यस शुड वी वेट फॉर सम मोर पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू ऐड और वी विल स्टार्ट दैट इज मैम सम स्टूडेंट्स हैव लेक्चर टिल 12 12 सो दे आर गोइंग टू जॉइन आफ्टर दैट ओके फाइन देन वी कैन स्टार्ट नो प्रॉब्लम थैंक यू मैम Uh, welcome everyone a very good afternoon to all thank you for joining us for today's webinar i am kuldeep matre i am an assistant professor working in the department of zoology seva sadans rk talreja college of arts science and commerce ulasnagar today we that is the department of zoology are presenting a webinar on setting up and maintenance of fish aquarium at home watching colorful fish swim has always been a fun experience for both young as well as old people but did you know that it has a positive effect on the body it helps us to relax unwind and feel make us feel with the nature such is the power watching fish and setting up an aquarium for the same to talk on this very topic today we have dr pramod chinde amongst us as a guest speaker before we start with the program uh, i would like to give uh, some instructions If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them in the chat box in your control panel. I'll bring them up once the presentation is over. And at the end of the session, we are also going to share a feedback link in the chat box itself. So those who will attend the program and feel the feedback will receive the certificate of attendance in a couple of days. Now I'll request Dr. Shanta Janiani, convener of today's program and head of zoology department, to deliver the opening remarks.
good afternoon to all good afternoon to all good afternoon ma'am a warm welcome to principal madam our guest speaker pramod chinde sir all the students teachers and friends today's deliberation on setting up of fish aquarium and its maintenance highlights the setting up of an aquarium at home and its maintenance Chinde sir has been with me and working together during the examinations and paper setting. I know sir from thirty five years. Coming to the topic, as you know, fishes are the most colorful of animals next to bird. When you see an aquarium, you feel they are very graceful in shape, body, and movement. And this keeping the aquarium in the home has been a very popular pastime all over the world. it is a hobby which is liked by all people young and old and it has become now a flourishing business in all cities now you know an aquarium can be a simple small bowl or even a large bowl with very colorful fishes in the drawing room table or even it can be a regular conventional glass house in a metal frame nowadays aquaria are ready made available the main idea of the aquarium is to provide for pet fishes a home which is as natural as their environment and to for the making of an aquarium many conditions are important for the survival of the fishes for example biochemical factors physical chemical conditions feeding cleanliness diseases and hazards have to be monitored for the maintenance of the fishes important is the adequate supply of oxygen because fishes respire with the help of oxygen dissolved in water and this can be done by proper aeration so it is very necessary the aeration is necessary light and many other factors are also necessary for the maintenance of aquarium i will not take much of your time and i will hand over to Kuldeep sir for further program. Thanking you. Thank you, madam. Moving ahead, I request Dr. Geeta Menon, Honorable IC Principal, to address the gathering. Thank you, Kuldeep. Very good afternoon to one and all. As the tradition goes, our Ketar Reja College is here again with one more session of a webinar. which gives you the opportunity to learn how to maintain a fish aquarium in your residence my dear student friends being mentally healthy bab am i audible yes ma'am yeah being mentally healthy and covid 19 has really taken toll on our mental health besides this as a young generation you are all in a competitive world where stress is part of your self we as teachers we as team in the from the rk rkt college just wants to make our students healthy and remain mentally strong just one more attempt yesterday we had a session on gardening today we have a session on maintaining the aquarium which as rightly pre presented by shanta madam is a very good tool to de-stress de-stress yourself just maintain one aquarium a small one yes for personal benefit it will de stress yourself it can be taken as an occupation to in the future so here we are we have a guest amongst us chinde sir retired from bn bnnn college bhivandi here to present his skill on maintaining an aquarium i congratulate all the participants who are here to take benefit of it and really make use of it i congratulate zoology department head shanta madam and her team to have made this arrangement for the students 
and my teacher colleagues who have joined to get benefit of this program. Congratulations to all. All the best to my team. Thank you. Over to you, Kuldeep, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much for your kind wishes. I now request Dr. Ajay Singh to introduce today's guest speaker, Dr. Pramod Shinde. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay. Thank you, Kuldeep, sir. And thank you all participants here in this program. Uh, participants, uh, we are very happy today because we have Dr. Pramod Shinde, sir, uh, as resource person for this program. Dr. Pramod Shinde is very well known uh, personality, not only in the Mumbai University, but also the outside. Dr. Sinde has contributed uh, much more in the field of geology and especially in the oceanography and marine fisheries. I will take this opportunity to read the highlights of the achievements made by Dr. Pramo Sinde, sir. Dr. Pramo Sinde, sir, is retired associate professor and head of the department, BNN College, Bhivandi. He has total 38 years experience in teaching as well as in research. Dr. Sinde has done his master's degree in 1982 from Mumbai University. Uh, he did his, uh, his doctoral degree in 1995. He has also done a diploma in higher education from Mumbai University in 1984. Uh, during his service tenure, Dr. Sinde was the part of several academic as well as administrative committees at both college and university level, including the Board of Studies in Geology, Mumbai University. Dr. Sinde has guided MPhil as well as PhD students for their research degrees and also carried out several projects of university and university grant commission, government of India, New Delhi. Dr. Pramo Shinde has participated and presented his research findings at various platforms of national as well as international reputes. He has also published so many papers uh, in the subject with his expertise in various reputed journals, scientific journals at both national as well as international uh, level. Uh, participants, what I have read here, these are the few achievements and contribution made by Dr. Pramo Shinde, sir, in his field. Uh, now I will request Dr. Pramo Shinde, sir. Uh, please, sir, take this mic and enrich our knowledge with your experience and skills. Shinde, sir, please, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to the management of RKT College, principal, vice principal, and head of the department, for inviting me, head of the department of zoology, for inviting me as a guest lecturer in this subject. Actually, we are having relationship or you can say um, contacts from last so many years. From, I will say, from 83 onwards, we had the contacts with Shanta ma'am. She was the student of our college. Uh, now, I'll come to our topic that is setting up of an aquarium and its maintenance. Now, what is aquarium? Aquarium is a container which is transparent. Now, when I'll say transparent, naturally it will be of glass or of acrylic or a similar kind of material. So aquarium can be defined as 
a container which is transparent and in which we can maintain the fishes for long period of time now i'll share my ppt with you so that you can understand it very well what i would like i i want to tell you about the aquarium now here you can see some of the aquarium fishes beautiful aquarium fishes they are called as discus fishes at global level if you will see these fishes they are called as discus fishes and total number of species are 31 in the world out of that some of the fishes which you can see are red discus blue discus albino discus albino means white albino discus albino discus with red stripes albino discus with blue stripes and so on so like this in all 31 species of discus fish you can get now here you can have a picture of an aquarium a well maintained aquarium will look like this it will be with fishes you can see here the fishes it will be with number of plants it will be with rocks it will be with filter it will be with uh, with uh, thermometer and all these things for uh, regulation of temperature now i'll show you my aquarium which is maintained in my house this is the aquarium now here you can see some of the fishes because this uh, photo is not so clear this is the angel this is gurami the number of fishes are there which are not visible here okay let it be now i'll come to the topic what is aquarium now i already told you the sir, definition yes sir may i interrupt you? sir sir can you uh, uh, switch on the slide show option uh, uh, i already switched on no you can't see this uh, we cannot see the full screen uh, what we can see is okay, the okay 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 one minute slide show where is the option for slide so that's a lower right corner near the magnification there is a slide show option as you can see Sir, if you press F5 key, it will also start the slideshow.
sir uh, on the on the lower right side near that magnification wala option is there na uske left hand side mein ek key hai dekho sir lower right side mein lower right side near that magnification minus and 80% something is shown us wo ha yes yes it's working sir yeah Now, sir kindly unmute yourself okay okay yeah. yes sir it's perfect now thank you sir okay sorry for the delay because i am not uh, habitual to handle all these things okay let it be now setting up of an aquarium now i have already shown you some of the pictures uh, this is a discus fish A number of discus varieties i told you 31 varieties in the world now this is the ideal setup of an aquarium now this is my aquarium now coming to the aquarium definition i already explain you that is it is a container made up of either glass or acrylic or similar type of material which is transparent for maintaining or for culturing the ornamental fishes ornamental fishes are also called as aquarium fishes because they are very beautiful or attractive fishes you can say now here in aquarium fishes you can put varieties of fishes which i tell you later on but if you will observe the aquaria basically aquaria are of various sizes and shapes the shapes varies from rectangular or square or round or polygonal or it may be triangular or it may be oval or it can be constructed as per our need so this is about the aquarium now here two types of aquaria here you can see one is rectangular aquarium which is made up of glass the second one is round aquarium which is also made up of glass now in case of rectangular aquarium basically there are two types of aquaria glass aquarium with metal angle and full glass aquarium that is without any angles under metal angles you get two types of metal angles generally one is of iron and second is of aluminium but these two types of aquaria that is made up of iron or aluminium angles they are having some disadvantages in iron uh, iron angle aquarium rusting problem is there whereas in aluminium angled aquarium then problems come up later on so to avoid all these things full glass aquarium is the better option or you can construct polygonal shape aquarium or as per your need you can construct full glass aquarium in various shapes now these aquaria which are generally used are rectangular in shape the rectangular shape aquaria basically are having the sizes of 18 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches this is the smallest size and the maximum size is 36 inches by 18 inches by 18 inches now in this case you can construct the aquarium 
according to your need even you can make larger aquarium if you are having large space sometimes 6 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet aquaria can also be seen in hotels or in public places or in big aquarium etc now if you will observe the history of aquarium the aquarium is used initially by chinese or maintaining the fishes was done in 9th century for the first time by chinese and later on by japanese in 15th century the other developed countries like america and europe started maintaining aquarium in the 20th century in india also it began in 20th century in mid 20th century i'll say that is in 1950 initially it was started as a hobby those who are interested in keeping the aquarium fishes they only maintain the aquarium earlier but now it becomes a profession you can earn a lot of money by maintaining the aquarium by breeding the aquarium fishes and so on now here if you will observe the aquarium what are the uses of aquarium now here first thing as i already told you for beautification of various places you can use aquarium that is residential places public places like hotels then gardens etc so it improves the aesthetic value of that particular area as well as it is having a recreational value also second use of maintaining aquarium is to study the behavior of the fishes or you can say that for various research purposes maintaining an aquarium is necessary the third one i already told you the breeding of the fishes can be done on commercial basis so that you can earn a sizable amount from it the most important use of aquarium is that if you will maintain the aquarium in your house and you will observe the aquarium at least for 5 to 10 minutes a day whatever the tension you have or whatever the stress you have can be reduced to a great extent so once the stress is reduced your blood pressure can be reduced automatically and the chances of heart attack or heart diseases are greatly reduced so maintaining and observing the aquarium fishes has got therapeutic value so this is the most important aspect of maintaining the aquarium beautification and all these things or business uh, that is the secondary use of aquarium i will say but main use is to maintain the health especially when a person is suffering from stress or blood pressure or heart diseases he or she must maintain the aquarium and observe the fishes regularly then in addition to that some of the people 
maintain the aquarium by the aquarist for showing their economic status or just for exhibiting the money they are having so they don't maintain on their own aquarist goes to their residence and they maintain it so such things are also there in our society so why to maintain the aquarium that i told you these are the facts for maintaining the aquarium now what is the economic potential now when you are maintaining the aquarium we spend some amount on it if it is at residence then you will have to spend little amount but if you are maintaining the business you will have to spend comparatively large amount into it so when you are investing comparatively large amount you should get income from it so what should be the economic potential of maintaining aquarium on commercial basis now if you will observe the economic potential at the global level then it is a multi billion dollar business nowadays if you will take the world as a whole in the world this industry is earning about 15 billion us dollar annually that comes to 110 billion rupees annually approximately 110 billion rupees annually we can earn from this particular industry at world level now in india also so many people are culturing and breeding aquarium fishes on commercial basis and that's why we can see some of the shops which are selling the aquarium fishes to common people now these aquarists get the commercial uh, aquarium fishes from the breeders now in india approximately 150 species of aquarium fishes are available now these varieties are called as indian loaches which are stripe loach or tiger loach it may be y loach or it may be neckline loach so different varieties i am telling you as far as indian loaches are taken into account so indian loaches are commercially cultured and bred either for export or for selling in domestic market then comes various types of barbs these are this is the name of the fish barb now in barbs you get aruli barb rosy barb tuna spot barb kola barb pygmy barb indian tiger barb and melon barb then you get different types of eel fishes then cat fishes gobi fishes etc they are either exported or they are marketed in local market and from that the people can earn approximately 1.1 million us dollar in india now out of 1.1 million us dollar approximately 90% fishes are from calcutta 8% of the fishes are from mumbai 
and only 2% fishes are either exported or marketed at domestic level from Chennai. So this is about the market or uh, selling of aquarium fishes at local level or at global level from India. Now, if you will observe the Asian countries which are exporting the aquarium fishes to various other countries, European countries, you can say, or to America or to Africa and so on. Singapore, though it is a very small country, less than the area of our Mumbai city, it is exporting approximately 20% of the aquarium fishes. Japan is exporting approximately 7.5% of the aquarium fishes. <coughs> Indonesia is exporting approximately 5.5% of the fishes. Malaysia, 7.5%. Thailand 4% and all these countries are exporting the fishes more than that of India. India is exporting only 0.3% of aquarium fishes to the rest of the world. Though India is second largest country, first largest country is China, which is also exporting very less number of fishes and that is up to 1.3% only. Singapore, which is smaller than our Mumbai, is exporting maximum aquarium fishes to the rest of the world. So as compared to Singapore or other countries, Asian countries, India is at the last for exporting the aquarium fishes. So I'll suggest you that instead of going for service, government service or private sector service, it is better to have this business and start earning a lot than your earning of government service or private sector service. And that's why setting up of an aquarium is a project in our fishery biology at TYBSC level. But uh, I'm very sorry to say that student don't look into that particular aspect and they have to maintain the aquarium. That's why they maintain the aquarium at TYBC level, but they don't give proper attention. This is my observation in various colleges in Mumbai region. So same is with our student also. They just start maintaining the aquarium and they forget totally. And when the exam comes, they again start collecting the fishes, feeding them, and at the last moment, some of the fishes die, and a very little number of fishes remain in the aquarium, and all these things. This is the condition in most of the colleges, or practically I'll say in most of all the colleges, same is the condition. So the purpose of maintaining the aquarium at TYBC level is not serving properly. So students should take interest in maintaining the aquarium fishes. Now, some of the aquarium fishes you can observe here. Aruana fish, you may be knowing about this fish. This is highly carnivorous fish and it can be maintained in a tank individually. It is because it kills other fishes. 
and that's why only single or one of fish can be maintained in the tank if you will uh, if you will go to the market arowana fish is the costliest fish in the market some of the arowana fish may cost you 1 lakh rupees or even more than that then comes discus fish a pair of discus fish can fetch you around 5 to 10000 rupees the flower horn fish here you can see flower horn fish can fetch you 2000 to 3000 rupees a fish and so on so you can think if you will maintain these fishes how much earning maintain and breed these fishes how much you can earn or sucker fish is also one of discus fish or flower horn fish the cost of oscar fish is less then parrot fish koi fish is very common even at some of the places or in gardens where the aquarium is maintained you can observe this koi fish guppy fish is having economic importance because it feeds on mosquito larvae so irradiation of mosquitoes can be done by maintaining the guppy fish in your area then gara rupa fish you can see here the pet of a lady in the aquarium because this gara rupa fish is feeding on the dead skin of human being so you can see uh, you can uh, remove your dead skin by putting your pet or putting your um, palm into an aquarium having number of gara rupa fish so you might have seen the massage centers with gara rupa fish then chitlet fish they are very beautiful fishes and they are also costing a lot in the market <coughs> then comes siamese spider this is very attractive fish though it is small fish the fins as compared to the fish are very big they are very beautiful and they are available in different colors you can get brown siamese spider red siamese spider blue siamese spider albino that is white siamese spider fish blue siamese spider with red fins red siamese spider with blue fins and so on so depending upon the hybridization you can get various colors in the siamese spider but remember that you cannot put two male siamese spider fishes in a single tank if you will put two siamese male spider fishes in a single tank then the one which is stronger will kill the weaker fish so a single siamese male fish can be maintained in the aquarium then comes beautiful gurami fishes now as far as gurami fishes are concerned varieties of gurami fishes are available in the market now two fishes i have shown here that is dwarf gurami and blue gurami similarly you will get pearl gurami which is golden in color and having pearl like spots all over the body then you get three spot gurami on the body you get 
three dark spots and that's why it is commonly called as three spot gurami then you get honey gurami then you get kissing gurami because in case of kissing gurami the lips are comparatively big and two fishes they come close with these lips together and that's why it is called as kissing gurami then you get giant gurami and so on so these are the various varieties of gurami available in indian market then you get sword tail fishes sword tail fishes means uh, the tail is elongated now in the picture you can see the lower side of the tail or caudal fin is elongated now that is the speciality of male sword tail fish in case of female sword fish the tail fin or the the tail i'll say those who are not from science faculty they will come to know the tail fin or tail in female fish both the tail uh, both the uh, halves of tail fin are identical so no elongated structure in tail fin in case of female only in male you can get this elongated structure and that is the identification of male and female swordfish then you get rosy barb barb i'll say in general in barbs you get rosy barb because of its color it is called as <coughs> rosy barb fish you get aruli barb kola barb pygmy barb melon barb indian tiger barb tuna spot barb etc then you get tetra fishes in tetra fishes neon tetra is very common fish it is because it is having a band horizontal band on the body which shines like the neon sign and that's why it is called as neon tetra fish as far as tetra fishes are concerned there are other varieties available they are glow light tetra cardinal tetra lemon tetra rosy tetra serpi tetra hockey stick tetra red eye tetra x ray tetra etc so these are the various types of tetras available in the market now comes various types of angel fishes now in market we get mainly three types of angel fishes striped angel fish half black angel fish completely black angel fish silver angel fish which is having complete silver coloration all over the body and so on then you get <coughs> the gold fishes different types of gold fishes you get now here you can say this is one variety of gold fish this is second variety third variety fourth variety and so on these are the various types of gold fishes in case of gold fishes generally the fins especially the tail fin is very big and when it swims the movement of tail fin appears very beautiful then you get guppy fishes i already explain you guppy fish the speciality of guppy fishes these fishes feed on mosquito larvae and that's why we can reduce the population of mosquito to 
to the maximum extent. Now this is blue glass guppy. This is red mosaic guppy. Both guppies are very beautiful. They are small size fishes. They can be introduced by municipality in the nalas or in the gutters so that they feed on mosquito larvae and population can be reduced. Now here you can see some of the tetra fishes which I already explained you in earlier slide. Neon tetra, black neon tetra, blue light neon tetra, green neon tetra and so on. So here four diagrams you can observe. Now then comes marine aquarium fishes. Generally, marine aquarium fishes can be observed only in big aquaria like Tarapurwala Aquarium. You will get marine aquarium fishes. Or if you will visit any five star hotel, then in five star hotels, you can observe marine aquarium fishes. Now, why I am saying only in big aquarium, big aquaria or in five star hotels or similar type of establishment, you get marine aquarium fishes. It is because maintaining marine aquarium fishes is very difficult. Now, why I am saying it is because for change of water, you must have either sea water or artificial sea water. And for preparing artificial sea water, number of ingredients are required. And even after adding number of ingredients into the water, you cannot prepare the seawater, which is very much similar to the natural seawater. Artificial seawater, uh, artificial seawater is not equivalent to natural seawater, and that's why it is very difficult to maintain the marine aquarium fishes. Only rich establishments can maintain it. Now, besides aquarium fishes, you can put some of the invertebrates. Invertebrates means the animals which do not have vertebral column. For, for non-science students, I am telling this. Now, they are some of the shrimps or prawns in short, I'll say to the non-science students, then starfishes, snails, some of the crabs. Then you can put live corals. Live corals means uh, they are from cylindrates. Then you can put live rocks. You will have to put some of the equipments, the salt, the marine fish, frozen or freeze dried food material, etc. Now, coming to the types of aquaria. Now, there are basically three types of aquaria we can maintain. It is fresh water aquarium, salt water aquarium, and brackish water aquarium. Now, what is brackish water? Some of you may be knowing, some of you may not be knowing. Brackish water is the mixing mixture of sea water and fresh water. That means you can say that. Wherever there is a mixing <coughs> or intermingling 
of river water with sea water that is called as brackish water so partly fresh water partly sea water you can say now here in fresh water aquarium we get two types of aquaria one is called as cold water aquarium this is maintained in european countries or in some parts of america where the temperature is very less or even in canada we can maintain cold water aquaria in india or in asian countries in general we can maintain tropical aquarium fishes under tropical aquarium fishes there are two sub types the aquaria which are having aggressive fishes aggressive fishes means the fishes which generally kill the other fishes example i gave you arowana fish it is an it is a aggressive fish or you can take into account uh, discus fish now in case of discus fish you can put only single variety of fish that means you can put number of discus fishes no problem but along with discus fishes if you will put flower horn fish or uh, gurami fish or sword tail fish or bar fish etc then discus fish will kill rest of all the types of the fishes and that's why only discus fishes can be maintained in an aquarium now second type of tropical aquarium is community aquarium now community word is very common we are living in a community that means we are living together without harming each other so similarly community aquarium is aquarium in which we can maintain different varieties of the fishes or different species of the fishes which do not harm each other for example you can put angel fish with gurami fish with red sword tail fish with bar fish or with danio fish or with loach fish or with cat fish and so on so community fish a uh, community aquarium can accommodate number of fishes which do not harm each other then comes salt water aquaria or sea water aquaria or marine aquaria under <coughs> under marine aquaria we get two sub types one is called as rip tank and second is called as only fish tank only marine fish tank now in case of rip rip tank we have live rocks this is the term used for the corals the corals which are live they are having the hard structure around their body which is rock like now some of the corals dead corals you might have seen in the laboratory brain coral is the commonest variety then pavia is another common variety tubifera is third common variety acropora is another variety of coral and so on number of corals you get fan coral is also there so uh, rip tank is with live corals which are with sea animals which are with sponges which are with star fishes which are with Uh, which are with number of marine fishes and so on so it is called as 
reef tank and if without live rock only marine fishes are placed in a tank it is called as only fish marine tank then comes brackish water tank that is mixture of sea water and fresh water there are some fishes which can live in brackish water tank and some of the fresh water fishes or some of the salt water fishes can be acclimatized to a brackish water gradually that means in fresh water if you will add little quantity of sea water initially and will go on adding gradually sea water into fresh water some of the fishes can get adjusted with that so you can convert some of the fresh water fishes to brackish water fishes or otherwise directly you can bring brackish water fishes from the aquarist or otherwise acclimatization is the uh, another option for maintaining the brackish water tank as compared to fresh water tank marine tank marine fish tank is very difficult to maintain and as compared to marine water tank brackish water tank is easier but as compared to fresh water tank brackish water tank is also difficult to maintain or costlier to maintain now how to set up a fresh water aquarium now it is because fresh water commonly we call the tap water or well water or river water or lake water and so on all these are the fresh waters so they are easily available to us and that's why we can maintain fresh water aquaria very easily now before maintaining the aquarium you must select the place and size of an aquarium now why i am saying place and size of the aquarium it is because you will have to select the place in such a way that direct sunlight should not fall on the aquarium sunlight should be there but direct sunlight should not fall and on the aquarium then according to your requirement you can choose a proper size aquarium or you can customize your aquarium from the aquarist depending upon the availability of the shape and size of your residence you can customize your tank after fetching the tank from the market or after bringing the tank of the required size from the market you will have to clean the aquarium thoroughly with tap water now while bringing the aquarium from the market you will have to bring the gravels you will have to bring the filter you will have to bring the aerator and so on so one by one i'll tell you what are the things which are commonly required for maintaining the aquarium so when you bring the aquarium and in general i'll say the accessories that is filter then uh, thermostat temperature control all these things then gravels for putting them sand so all these things you will have to clean thoroughly in under the tap water after cleaning the tank gravels various accessories sand etc with tap water i will suggest you to clean 
all these things with salt water first salt has got bacteriostatic effect that means it will kill the bacteria which are available on the surface of the aquarium or on various accessories and so on after cleaning with salt water you will have to rinse it with 1 to 3% of potassium permanganate solution that is kmno4 solution potassium permanganate is available in medical shop or you will get from the aquarist so you can bring it or even if you don't want to use it use our common salt properly so that whatever the bacteria are available they can be killed and your tank and all these accessories will become bacterial free bacteria free then after cleaning all these things with tap water salt water and rinsing with potassium permanganate solution keep your aquarium at the chosen place and then spread the dried gravels dried gravels either under the direct sunlight or if you are having the oven you can oven dry the gravels but it is better to sun dry it because it is the very simple method which do not cost you any amount if you will use oven electricity charges you will have to bear so it is better to dry the gravels under direct sunlight the temperature which can be raised due to the sun rays can kill the bacteria if any exist even after washing with salt water so that is the purpose of keeping the gravels under direct sunlight then after drying these gravels under the direct sunlight you will have to spread these gravels in such a way that it should form 2 to 3 inches thickness on the bottom of your aquarium now after Uh, after putting the gravels you will have to spread the sand over it but while spreading the gravels on the bottom of the aquarium the spreading should be done in such a way that on the back side of the aquarium the thickness of the gravel should be more than the thickness which which is at the front side approximately the slope which is formed due to the difference in the thickness on the back side and front side should be 5 to 6 degree now why i am telling you that i'll tell you later on now that means in other words you can say that it should have a slight slope on the front side that you will have to remember and then you can spread the fine sand particles over it now after that you can put the decorative shells or dead corals or filters and other accessories if any into your tank aquarium i will say now after that you will have to fill little amount of water into an aquarium by putting a beaker into it or by putting a bowl in it now why i am telling bowl or beaker in the aquarium 
now it is because when you pour the water into the aquarium from the top it will splash and because of splashing of water the gravels and the sand which you have arranged will get disturbed to avoid the disturbance in the arrangement of the gravels and all these things you put the bowl and pour the water into the bowl or into the beaker so that your arrangement will not get disturbed fill it a little bit and then and then sorry for the disturbance and then uh, you can use some of the aquatic plants hydrophytes in scientific word they are term aquatic plants or water plants in the gravels you will have to put these plants into the gravels so that they will not after putting the water into the tank so once you plant the aquatic plants into the tank you can fill your tank completely with water completely means not up to the rim this also you will have to take care you should not fill your aquarium up to the rim or up to the neck little space should be left open in the aquarium with water so why i am saying this it is because if you will fill the aquarium up to the neck or up to the rim some of the fishes may jump out from your tank and they will die so to avoid the jumping of the fishes from the tank you should not fill your tank up to the rim 2 to 4 inches space depending upon the size of the tank can be left as it is at the time of filling of tank so that care you must take now after that leave the tank as it is for a period of about a week or 8 to 10 days now within 8 to 10 days plants will start developing the roots the water will get dechlorinated if you are using tap water then it will get dechlorinated that means chlorine will be removed from it on its own when exposed to the air or otherwise you will have to put dechlorinated water into it so before putting the tap water it should be exposed to the air for at least 24 hours and then you can put it into the tap into the aquarium now it is because tap water is having 3 to 5 ppm chlorine into it and this chlorine is harmful to the fishes the death of the aquarium fishes may occur because of this 3 to 5 ppm chlorine parts per million <clears throat> now here i told you about the setting of an aquarium now how how many gravels you will have to put into an aquarium so depending upon the size the amount of gravels to be added colorful gravels i'll say to be added varies but in general gravels in pounds to be added 
इज इक्वल टू लेंथ इन टू वेड इन इंच डिवाइडेड बाय टेन ना इफ यू विल टेक इन टू अकाउंट दिस कैलकुलेशन देन if you will take into account two feet by one feet by one feet tank that is 24 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches tank then 24 into 12 divided by 10 that comes to around 29 pounds 29 pounds will be approximately equals to 13 and half kg approximately i am telling you 13 and half kg of gravels or 13 to 14 kg of gravels exactly it comes to 29 pounds now 1 pound is equal to 453.59 grams or in general you can say 454 grams is equal to 1 pound so 29 pounds comes to around 13 to 14 kg now after that you will have to put light at the top of the tank now this light is necessary for proper growth of the fishes as well as proper growth of the aquatic plants without light plants cannot survive the the uh, light is necessary for the process of photosynthesis now here i am little bit confused whether all the students can understand photosynthesis or not and that's why i am thinking to simplify it uh, so photosynthesis is the process in which plants prepare their own food material so for photosynthesis they require light without light they cannot prepare their food material and when they will not be able to prepare the food material they will die after some days so it is necessary to put the bulb at the top of the tank but if your tank is getting sufficient light light i am saying in day there is no need there is no need of putting the light at the top of your tank but if you need the bulb or light at the top of the tank then the wattage of the bulb can be calculated by using this formula that is length in feet into 32 divided by duration of exposure duration of exposure means how much time you are you have to put the light on now for example once again i'll tell you if your tank is having the 3 feet length that is 36 inches length then 3 into 32 divided by duration of exposure 3 into 32 comes 96 and depending upon the time of exposure you can adjust the wattage of your bulb or light now if you want to put 3 feet tank for 5 hours exposure to the light then generally you will have to put 20 wattage bulb on the tank so this is very simple calculation uh, 3 into 32 that comes to 96 96 and if you want to expose your tank for 5 hours then divide it by 5 hours it comes to around 19.2 exactly speaking but you will not get 19.2 wattage bulb so you will have to put 20 wattage bulb or 
ट्यूब लाइट और नाउ डेज एलईडी लैम्प्स एलईडी लाइट्स आर अवेलेबल सो ट्वेंटी वेटेज एलईडी लाइट्स कैन बी पुट फॉर फाइव आवर्स इन थ्री फीट टैंक सो दिस इज अबाउट द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ ग्रेवल्स एंड वेटेज ऑफ बल्ब now one more important thing now how many fishes can be added into a tank now depending upon the size of your tank you can put the number of fishes you can select the size of the fishes and so on but in general 1 gram of live fish require minimum of 1 liter of water so depending on the size of your tank you can put number of fishes the example i'll tell you here if your tank is having the size of 24 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches that means 2 feet by 1 feet by 1 feet then in this tank if you will fill up to the rim up to the rim i am telling you the capacity of this tank will be around 54 to 55 liters Two feet by one feet by one feet tank can accommodate fifty-five liters of water up to the rim, but we cannot fill it up to the rim. So, in general, you can say that you can put around forty-five to fifty liters of water into it. So, accordingly. you can put around 40 grams of live fishes into it so this is very simple calculation 40 grams of live fish is too much you can uh, in general in general we cannot put 40 grams of live fishes in 20 by 24 by 12 by 12 inches tank because the density of the fishes is too much in such a small tank but as per the calculation you can put 40 grams of fishes when you are taking proper care now what are the uh, what are the necessary care you will have to take that i'll tell you later on so one by one i'll finish the topic and we'll come to that also now coming to the aquatic plants or hydrophytes now i told you that you can put the aquatic plants in the aquarium which increases the beautification of the tank or you can say it improves the aesthetic value of your tank these plants are hydrilla those who are from botany or those who are from uh, those who are from botany zoology they may be knowing all these plants hydrilla is the common plant available in the lakes or in the dams and so on or in the river also then valisneria cork screw valisneria pistia ludwigia cabomba amazon sword plant aquarods aponogaton ceratophyllum cryptocorine bacopa agrophila ceratopteris water sprite sagittaria etc these are the various hydrophytes or water plants which can be placed in the aquarium now why to place these water plants into aquarium now first of all 
I already told you, they increases the beauty of your tank or of your aquarium. Secondly, the important aspect behind putting these aquatic plants is that they perform photosynthesis during daytime and during photosynthesis they release oxygen. So your tank will have sufficient amount of oxygen for the fishes because fish will require oxygen, dissolve oxygen from the water and when aquatic plants will release oxygen, some amount of oxygen will get mixed or dissociates, I will say exact word is dissociation. Dissociation of oxygen will take place and which will increase the dissolved oxygen level of the water present in the tank. So that fishes will get sufficient oxygen. Secondly, during daytime, plants will absorb carbon dioxide, which is released by the fishes during their respiration process. And this CO2 will be utilized by the plants for the photosynthesis. Light and carbon dioxide along with some nutrients are needed for photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide will be absorbed by the plants. Oxygen is released, which can be utilized by the fishes. In addition to that, fishes which give out undigested food material in the form of ammonia and urea will act as fertilizer to the plants or in simple words you can say that ammonia and urea will be absorbed by these plants and this is how the pH of the water can be maintained slightly alkaline. If urea and ammonia along with carbon dioxide is present in the water, there are chances of either reducing the pH or increasing the pH depending upon the quantity of CO2 or ammonia. Ammonia is highly basic alkaline, whereas CO2 forms H2CO3, carbonic acid, in the water. So when CO2 is in large amount, the pH will be lower down. If ammonia is in large amount, pH will be higher. So both pH are harmful to the fishes. So automatically, they are nullified by the presence of plants. In addition to that, these plants can be used for hiding some of the fishes or for hiding the eggs laid by the fishes. And some of the fishes, they use the plants as the food material. So these are the advantages of putting the plants into aquarium. And that's why we must put the aquatic plants into aquarium. If your tank is having sufficient number of aquatic plants, there is no need of aerator or filter. The cost of normal filter is more than 500 rupees. So instead of that, if you are getting the aquatic plants from the nearby lake or river, you can bring directly free of charge and you can put into your tank. Now here you can see some of the aquatic plants which can be placed in your tank. 
Now here, Kobamba. This is very common variety. Ludwigia is also very common. Then Valisneria, Corkscrew Valisneria. They are also very common. Sagittaria is also common. Then Hydrilla is the commonest variety. Pistia is also common, but uh, Pistia remains at the surface level, so dissolution of oxygen is less. But it can be used <clears throat> for attaching the eggs, for removing the urea and ammonia, and so on. So <clears throat> plants are important in the aquarium. Now coming to the food and feeding of the aquarium fishes. Now this is very common thing. Whenever any living organism is taken into account, the basic requirement is its food and its house. House means here aquarium. Now, what is the food for fishes? Now, food for fishes varies according to the type of the fishes which we have placed in our aquarium. So, while selecting the aquarium fishes, we should be very careful so that even by giving a simple or single variety of food, whatever the fishes you have placed in the aquarium can get the food material. The feeding habit should be identical, I'll say, in simple words. Otherwise, if some of the fishes are carnivorous, some of the fishes are herbivorous, then you will have to put both the varieties of the food material. And <coughs> in that case, it will be a costly matter. Per day, you will have to bring food for carnivorous fishes as well as for herbivorous fishes. Now, according to the type of the food, they are having different requirements as far as nutrients are taken into account. So, these nutrients should be given properly through the food material only. Now, what are the types of the food material? Basically, only two types of food material we get. One is called as live food material and second is called as artificial food material. Now, you will ask me what is live food material? Live food material means the smaller organisms on which the fishes feed. Now, one of the small organism I already told you while explaining the guppy fish, that is mosquito larvae. Mosquito larvae can be used as a live food for most of the fishes. Whether they are guppy or gurami or barb, or tetra fish, or loach fish, or Siamese fighter fish, and so on, they feed on mosquito larvae. The commonest food is tubifex worms. Or another, <coughs> another common food material is red worms. Red worms are commonly uh, are termed as chironomous larvae. Science students, they are knowing chironomus larvae. Chironomus larvae are used for mounting of giant chromosomes. For science students, I am telling, in market, if you will go, common people know it as red worms. They are available in the market in live condition. Tubifix worms are also available in live condition. Dapnea. Earthworms, paramecia, paramecia culture can be kept in your house 
if you are a science student even arts and commerce student can learn it how to maintain paramecium culture or rotifer culture or moena culture etc so that they can be maintained very easily in our house also then you can give the ek yolk emulsion if above food material is not available then you can put yolk emulsion into the tank but the disadvantage of using yolk emulsion is that the water becomes turbid foggy you can say and if you are putting the yolk emulsion after feeding of the fishes you will have to change the water immediately otherwise bacteria will develop and they may affect the health of the fishes or they may infect the fishes even then pieces of meat pieces of the liver pieces of the muscles small pieces naturally uh, then pieces of boiled egg etc can be given to the fishes now remember that live food is preferable over artificial food though artificial food is fortified with various nutrients fortified means added nutrients into it in artificial food various nutrients can be added into it nutrients like minerals vitamins proteins etc they can be added though they are added into sufficient quantity natural food or live food is the best option for the fishes fishes get all nutrients from live food material and not from artificial food material and if you are feeding the fishes with artificial food material then after a week or so it should be altered with live food sometimes live food is not available easily to some of the people then in that case they have to feed the fishes on artificial food only then in that case they can put they can put live food in a week time or after 10 days or so so you should alter the fish alter the food material if providing artificial food now how to prepare artificial food now artificial food can be prepared by taking the grinded coarse grinded wheat flour coarse grinded dried prawns coarsely grinded coriander and then mix it together properly add little amount of water or milk into it now if you are adding milk then uh, later on it may give some problem into your water into the tank the water will become slightly milky so you have to change the water after some days but if you are putting the water into the grinded wheat powder dried prawns etc then there will be no problem of becoming water foggy then after that you add some minerals vitamins and proteins into it bake it lightly in the oven if oven is not available then you can slightly warm it in a container on the gas and then after drying grind it 
into the required sized particles so if your species are small the the small size particles of the food material you have to provide if species are larger accordingly you can put the particle size of your grinded food material so this is how you can prepare the grinded food material uh, you can prepare the artificial food material in the house now how to maintain the aquarium fishes now this is about the setting of an aquarium i explain you now maintaining of an aquarium fishes setting of aquarium is comparatively easy <coughs> anybody can set the aquarium easily but maintenance of aquarium is comparatively difficult task but if you are having interest you can maintain it very easily now what care you will have to take while maintaining the aquarium aquarium fish i shall say initially you will have to clean the tank as i told you before setting and after that also you will have to clean the tank regularly from inside and you will have to change some quantity of water on daily basis if you are not changing the water on daily basis if it is not practicable to you then on holiday or on sunday i'll say at week weekend you will have to remove minimum of 50% of water from the tank and then replace it with dechlorinated water that means you cannot use tap water directly you will have to expose it for a period of about 24 hours and then you can use it for putting it in an aquarium then observe the behavior of the fish carefully when you are maintaining the aquarium you will have to observe the fishes regularly or daily i'll say some fishes swim rapidly or speedily some fishes are slow movers some fishes take one corner of your tank and remain there for long period of time or occasionally they move from that particular place and so on so this is the behavior of a fish in simple words i'll say so observe the behavior of the fish and if any change in behavior is observed that means a slow mover fish is moving rapidly in the tank for a considerable time period then you can come to uh, you will see, you can say that it is having some problem or it is having some abnormal behavioral pattern and then you try to locate the problem whether it is having the skin disease or whether it is having undigestion or whether it is having any other problem that you will have to observe then if you are using water filter instead of aquatic plants then water filter should be clean after 3 to 4 days or minimum of 8 days and within 8 days or weekend i'll say you must clean the filter so that 
filtration process will take place normally and the removal of the waste material from the tank will take place in a well fashion if you are not getting the time even on the weekend or after 10 days or so and water filter is there proper water filter i'll say then after a period of one month or even sometimes two months you can change 100% of water but this is not advisable now i'll say this is not advisable because when you are changing 100% of water there are chances of shock to the fish and chances of mortality mortality means death of the fishes because 100% of water is changed that means totally new environment you are providing to the fishes and therefore sometimes they may not get adjusted with this new environment and death may occur so it is better to avoid 100% of change of water you can remove 50% or 60% or maximum up to 70% of water from the tank but if at all you are not able to do this then take out the fishes from the tank in a water from the tank with net in separate container now once again i'll repeat you will have to transfer little quantity of water from your aquarium into the container in which you want to transfer the fishes temporarily transfer the fishes temporarily into another container having aquarium water with net then remove the corals shells rocks then aquatic plants carefully place the aquatic plants in the container having water and fishes uh, corals shells rocks etc can be cleaned thoroughly under tap water then with salt water and then with kmno4 solution and then gravels and all these things can be washed thoroughly you can apply dry salt from inner side of the walls of aquarium so that if any infection is available on the glass or acrylic from inside that can be killed with salt and then you can put all these accessories into the tank as i told you earlier in setting up of an aquarium and then put dechlorinated water into the tank after putting the bowl and all these things plant your plants aquatic plants and then transfer the dechlorinated water into it and then you are fishes with the help of net so this care you will have to take in addition to that as i told you earlier water filters you are putting into your tank these filters are of three types first is bottom filter that means at the bottom of your tank the filter is placed and over this filter white uh, mesh you can see over this filter gravels are placed and over the gravels sand is sprayed so this is bottom filter then this filter is in common use this is called as mid water column filter or column filter simply it is called as column filter which can be seen in many aquaria or in shops even you can observe these filters or surface filter they can be attached 
on the tank from outside the water is taken in from this in into this filter it is filter here and then send back again into the aquarium this is called as surface filter bottom filter because it is placed at the bottom this is column filter because it is placed in the column of the water and this is surface filter because it is kept at the surface of the water so these are the three types of filters this is the better option that is column filter which is used extensively now last topic that is equipment maintenance how to maintain the equipments which you are using in your aquarium in this case it can be divided into three types of maintenance daily maintenance weekly maintenance and monthly maintenance in daily maintenance you will have to check regularly your pumps filters the temperature of the water the light you have put whether it is working or it is fused that you will have to check regularly and that can be checked easily when you will put on the light if it is not blowing blowing then you will have to replace it okay or you will have to see why it is not functioning then once in a week check the points from where you are taking the supply electric supply for your lights from your filters etc you can check the wires or cords they are term for lights and filters replace the carbon which is available in the filter but nowadays carbon filters are not available sponge filters are available so in a big time remove the filter from the water after removing the filter you can easily remove the sponge present in the filter wash it thoroughly remove the unwanted material from the pores or uh, gaps or holes i will say of this sponge carefully and then put it back into the aquarium and in weekly maintenance you will have to check your tank whether it is having any leak or it is in normal condition or whether it is damaged because of any mechanical pressure or so that you will have to check and then you can check the stand of the aquarium because even if you are putting uh, using 24 by 12 by 12 inches tank the weight of the tank after filling with water will be around 70 kg around 70 kg i am saying it is because 13 to 14 kg of gravel around 50 liters of water that means 50 kg of water plus weight of the tank which is around 10 kg i'll say approximately i am saying if it is full glass tank the weight is less so approximately 70 kg of weight you are putting on the stand or on the platform so check your stand or platform whether it is it has any cracks or it has any bend in the stand or not that you have to check so that hauling up the tank from the stand from the stand can be avoided then when there is a light there is a infection 
now at present we are facing the problem of covid it is an infectious disease it is in control now number of cases in our area are dropped below 10 per day death is zero from last so many days but in fishes also you get some of the diseases now these diseases can be avoided or can be prevented by taking proper care normally we say that preventing the disease is better than cure so same is applicable to the fishes also because once the disease is develop in fish is it spreads quickly because the medium is same what in water they are living so spreading of disease takes place quickly and complete lot of aquarium fishes can be destroyed in a very short period of time destroyed means death will occur in a very short period of time so provide adequate and non polluted water avoid overcrowding of the fishes that means providing sufficient space providing sufficient balanced and adequate food food overfeeding should be avoided otherwise indigestion problem may occur or sometimes uh, because of excessive amount of food in the water the water will become turbid and turbid water will grow bacteria quickly and these bacteria will harm your fish so exact quantity of the fish uh, of the food material should be provided to the fishes with sufficient quantity of nutrients then temperature fluctuation should be provided i told you that the tank should not be placed directly under sunlight sunlight should not fall directly on tank it is because it increases the temperature beside this because of sunlight algal formation on the wall of the tank occurs and transparency of the tank is reduced greatly and that's why it should be avoided then i told you that sloping gravel should be arranged in a sloping fashion half inch difference should be there from back side to front side or in a simple words 5 to 6 degrees slope on the front side of the tank should be provided now why when the fish remove the undigested food material from its digestive system that is fecal matter i'll say or undigested food material that will roll on on its own on the sloping surface that means the fecal matter will come on the front side of the tank and that can be siphoned easily with a tube or you can remove it easily that's why 5 to 6 degree slope is essential then disinfect the system now how to disinfect that i i already told you that is you can use salt or you can use kemenopore solution or you can use methylene blue solution science student can understand methylene blue but this is available in the aquarium shop also you can bring methylene blue solution it is 
it is having bacteriostatic effect then you should not put your hands frequently into the tank and handling of the fishes should be avoided if any occurrence of this is fish is observed any occurrence of this is is observed then you will have to remove the fish treat it well and then after getting cured you can release back into the tank so this is about the preventing this is about preventing the diseases into your aquarium fishes hello am i audible yes sir ah, okay because i am getting instruction here audio setting that's why that's okay no problem now coming to the last point what are the infections in short i'll explain you this is uh, principle i'll say for science student parasitic infections parasitic infections are of five types fungal infection bacterial infection protozoan infection worm infection and crustacean infection under fungal infection two types of fungi infect the fishes saprolegnia species and brachiomycosis species they cause dermatomycosis in the fishes or brachiomycosis in the fishes that means gill are affected and in first case general body surface affected called as dermatomycosis brachiomycosis species affect the gills so this is in short then bacterial infection is of four types fin rot ulcer dropsy eye disease in fin rot these bacteria eat the fins of the fishes or uh, destroy the fins of the fishes and when the fins are destroyed the fishes cannot swim properly they lose their balance and ultimately death occurs then ulcer ulcer is the common term which is available in medical dictionary or even in human being this disease is available gastric ulcer or peptic ulcer similarly in fishes ulcer occurs on the general body surface that is wound formation occurs on the general body surface then dropsy in case of dropsy accumulation of the liquid because of the infection of bacteria inside the body occurs and the abdomen ruptures because of excessive accumulation of this fluid and the fish dies then eye disease in eye disease bulging of eye occurs the eyeball comes out from the eye socket that is called as eye disease then in protozoan diseases first is ichthyopteriasis or it is commonly called as white spot disease on the body white spots are developed the fish becomes uneasy it try to rub its body on the rough surfaces and ultimately death occurs then costiasis or sliminess the common term sliminess you can understand excessive secretion of mucus from the general body surface occurs and because of death death takes place then microsporidian infection protozoan form spores over the body of the fish these spores later on grow into the adult one and then they infect the fishes then trematodes 
fever fluke worm you might have heard so trematodes include liver fluke so similar type of worms infect the fishes then cysto cysto is the in common infection or pin worm or arrow worm infection in human being similarly in fishes also you will get, you will get the infection of nematodes then acanthocephala you may not be knowing but that is also a type of worm hirudinia that is leech leech you are studied they attaches on the general body surface and uh, absorb the blood from the body of fish and this is how gradually the fish becomes weak and ultimately death occurs then in crustacean infection you get the argulus lernia and argacillus infection they all are parasites parasite either on the gills or on the general हेलो सर dear participant it seems there is some technical issue at our resource person end okay let me speak to him you kindly be uh, in the meet
Okay, dear participants. Okay, the feedback link, I have shared it in a, a chat box. Okay, you can feel the feedback. Your feedback is valuable for us. Uh, I'll also Am I request... audible now? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. So there are a couple of questions, sir, okay. which uh, participants have. May I ask? Okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? So the uh, first question is, for beginners, which is the easiest species to handle? Yeah, uh, depends. It depends on the size of the tank. Generally, on an average, I'll tell you, twenty-four by twelve by twelve inches is preferred. On an average, but he or she is not having sufficient space. She can go for a round bottom, uh, a round uh, aquarium, or. she can go uh, he or she can go for smaller size aquarium even 10 by 10 by 10 inches aquarium is available in the market or they can customize it according to the requirement the requirement for gravels is less accordingly the number of fishes she or she can put is less and food also requ food requirement is also less so mm -hmm. they can maintain it easily initially and okay. later on if they want they can increase the size of the tank okay sir so there is one more interesting question okay can i grow native species collected from the nearby areas in aquarium is it legal sure sure no problem yeah okay only thing is that they should be attractive <laughs> uh now one thing Uh, though, uh, uh, whether he is a male student or female student, you or she, male, male. So then he may be knowing Muri. Local name is Muri. In the market, it is available in live condition, in a small container. So even that can be placed. They they are used for eating purpose. That is, they are edible fishes. but they can be kept in aquarium they are bottom dwellers they remain at the bottom but when they move they appear beautiful okay thank you sir uh, now i'll invite uh, professor parimita sharma to deliver a vote of thanks thank you kuldeep i'm feeling privileged to have been asked to propose vote of thanks for this occasion I on behalf of the entire team would like to extend my hearty vote of thanks to our resource person Dr. Pramod Sindhe sir who has taken out his valuable time from his busy schedule sir has very well explained types of aquarium their setup various fishes which can be easily maintained at our home we all know that the status of maintenance of aquarium has changed from hobby to profession such an in depth knowledge shared in an interesting and lucid manner by sir will be definitely enhance enhancing the entrepreneur skills of all the participants thank you sir for your impressive and motivating address i would like thank to you, express yeah thank you sir i would like to express a deep gratitude to our principal dr geeta menon ma'am for her presence and continuous support for the organization of the program I would also like to extend my thanks to our beloved head of the department Dr. Shanta Janani madam for extensive guidance and valuable contribution for the webinar organization. I am happy to express my vote of thanks to all the faculty members of zoology department and technical team headed by Professor Neelam Kapoor madam to make the webinar a success. Finally a big thank you to all the other staff members and student participants who were there throughout the session and made this session a great success Please pardon me if i have left some names thank you all once again over to you kuldeep 
Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Actually, Actually, I can should I... say sorry because I took a lot of time. Uh, two hours I took. So I no, sir, but it was I a very not, informative uh, lecture. See the timing. No, sir, it was a very informative lecture. I, I, I hope everyone must have enjoyed. Right. And yes, too long no, many... for students. Yeah, but there were many questions, and I actually took only two. <laughs> okay. But but many of the so questions you can, have you actually can ask, answered. No problem. Okay, then uh, there is. This question is for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, I think many of the questions, uh, okay, you have already answered in your PPT, like uh, someone, someone has asked, can we culture tropical fish in an aquarium? Yeah, our, ours is tropical aquarium only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so one student otherwise asked, what will Not happen? Cold if... water aquarium. Yeah. yeah. One student otherwise asked, what will happen if we feel the tank completely full? Hello, hear you. Yeah. yeah. So one of the students has asked, what will happen if the aquarium is completely full with water? I told her, the fishes yeah. will jump out. Some of the fishes may <laughs> die because of jumping. Yeah, sir. Uh, one student has asked, how expensive is marine setup? Marine is too expensive. Actually, setting is easy, but maintenance is costly. Yes. Because practically we cannot bring pure mm -hmm. sea water from our region, in our region. Yeah. It is possible for Tarapurwala Aquarium because they are having huge pipeline inside the sea. They are having filters uh, and mm -hmm. all these things, big aerators, and then they can put uh, marine aquarium. But for common man, it is not possible. Uh -huh. Who will bring the sea water? Yeah. And artificial seawater, we cannot prepare. Actually, we can prepare, but it is very difficult and it is not as good as natural seawater. Mm. So, there's one more question uh, regarding uh, local fishes. How to know what is the need of local fishes with respect to water parameters and temperature? With respect to water parameters. One parameter I already told you, pH. Slight alkaline pH is necessary, 7.2, 7.3 like that. The second thing is that the water should not be hard. If hardness exists, then you will have to remove the hardness by the age-old method. You cannot use different chemicals to remove the hardness. It is because these chemicals will harm the fishes. So age-old method is to boil the water completely, allow it to allow it to stand for some time so that normal room temperature will be acquired and then that water can be used. Then DO should be around 5 mg per liter. These are the basic requirements. If DO is 5 mg per liter, then naturally CO2 is under control. Plants, if they are placed, they will take care of that CO2. PR will also be removed. So water parameters will be automatically maintained if plants are placed in your tank. So there is one more question Umpar has. Sir, uh, he is doing aquarium maintenance uh, and artificial landscaping for almost six years now. So he is asking whether he can mm -hmm. go for a commercial. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? If he is having sufficient space, at least one room, 10 by 10 room, he can uh, place uh, metal stand, heavy metal stand, and over that stand he can put number of aquaria of different sizes, shapes, and blower can be brought 
for supplying the oxygen or uh, actually air i'll say not oxygen blower can be brought from the market for supplying air into the tank tubing pro Okay, uh, I think there is uh, uh, some technical issue at Sir sign. So it's almost two thirty now. So what we'll do is we'll stop here. I officially announce that this session is over. Uh, so all, all the participants, thank you for being patient with us and staying in the meet till the end. Thank you very much, Nikita, ma'am. You can end the meet. Okay. Thank you, Nikita, ma'am.